Hey everybody, it's Midwest Comic Man. Welcome back to the third episode of my series celebrating old movie serials. Today, we're going to look at Chapter 3 of The Crimson Ghost, The Fatal Sacrifice. The end of Chapter 2, it appeared that Duncan was led into the path of the Death Ray. So let's pick it up from there with Chapter 3. All about it. We're lucky to be alive, Ash. I don't get it. Professor Chambers very cleverly set a high voltage trap for us to walk into when we returned with the cyclotron. Duncan got there ahead of us, however, and Chambers was killed trying to save him. Lucky for us. That throws a monkey wrench into all of your plans. It would mean a delay. I can build a larger cyclotrope without the aid of its inventor by copying the model we now have. However, it will take longer and I'll need a lot of money. That's easy. We'll crack a bank. It's much simpler than that, Ash. We still have Chambers' machine, and within its range, it can stop any motor. Tomorrow morning, an armored car will deliver the payroll to the Steel Corporation. Here it comes. Something's gone haywire. Stay on guard while I check the motor.
guard's dead, but he turned on the automatic alarm before he passed out. Never mind. You and Carson get the money. I'll take care of the police. Okay. That signal's coming from behind us. Must be that armored car that just passed. <laughs> behind the armored car holdup. Police are unable to explain what stopped their cars and burned out the electrical system. Gentlemen, there is no doubt that Professor Chambers' cyclotrode was used to carry out this robbery. You're probably right. But what steps do you plan to take to prevent more outrages? I've already taken one. As you know, heavy water is the key to the operation of the cyclotrode. The supply in the tubes must be almost exhausted by now. And I suppose the Crimson Ghost can't get any heavy water. Exactly. The compound is made only by the Cornwall Chemical Company, and they won't release a drop without my authorization. That's certainly an effective step. But it may be dangerous for you. You're up against a ruthless enemy who'll stop at nothing. I realize that, Professor Parker, and I'm taking every possible precaution. I'm glad to hear that. Shall we adjourn, gentlemen? Right. I certainly. Professor Richards, you think you have stopped me from getting the heavy water, but you shall soon know how unwise it is to stand in the way of the crimson ghost. You will be... Professor Richards thought he could prevent my getting the heavy water. You'll change his mind about that. Yes. As soon as I put the collar on him, he will take orders from me. And get the heavy water for you personally. Strap him on.
You, get over there. Get your hands up. It may interest you to know that I heard every word you said. You see, you made the mistake of using chlorotene on that record. I detected the odor and kept my face close to the floor so that I escaped most of the fumes. I had an idea I might be brought to the Crimson Ghost. Now, the police can take over from here. everybody, it's Midwest Comic Man back with you. So here are some of my takeaways from Chapter 3. Wouldn't there have been any way for the Professor to stop Duncan without sacrificing himself? Also, in that same scene, is it just me, or after carefully walking behind the Death Ray, I think Duncan just walked right in front of it to turn it off. I don't know how that works. Later on in the episode, if the Crimson Ghost could have copied the uh, Cyclotrode all along, why didn't he? And I love when they're robbing the armored car, how they come whipping around the corner with their pistols blazing, like they could ever be accurate from that distance. So that's chapter three. Check out the next chapter in the next installment of this series. Next will be chapter four of The Crimson Ghost. More content on my channel. Also make sure you check out the Comic Core, powered by the Hero Initiative. This is a live show for everyone's taste. Make sure you check out Golden Guys on Tuesday, where you can discover the best in Golden Age comics with yours truly and three other guys passionate about the time period. Till next time, this is Midwest Comic Man. See you in the funny pages.